Bellator 238, Inglewood up to no good in California, and the headline news was Chris Cyborg and exiting UFC recently, making her Bellator debut and capturing the women's featherweight title with a fourth round stoppage of long reigning champion Julia Budd. And Chuck, the historical news here is that Cyborg, the legend, the Brazilian phenom, becomes the only fighter to hold titles in UFC, mm -hmm. Bellator, Strike Force, and Invicta. How impressed were you at age 34 with this victory? I was pretty impressed, actually. I have to say, this is the first time in a while that I've had a little bit of doubt going into a fight with her. Even, you know, the Amanda Nunes went, okay, that was what it was, but somebody other than Amanda Nunes, I thought there was a little bit of doubt there. And in fact, people were, uh, the people were kind of talking about the sharp money and where the line would go and stuff. I was like, you know, if I'm betting this, I'm probably going to take the value of Julia Budd in this one, just because I felt like she was being a little bit unheralded, unsung she's going She's criminally in. underrated, yeah. historically. And she's big. Like, this was the big difference if you were watching from the, from the get-go in Strike Force, the types of opponents Cyborg was facing versus 10 years later when she's facing somebody like Julia Budd, who actually was bigger than her and almost looked stronger than her early in the, in the first couple rounds. There was a couple times she was just out muscling her and things like that. But uh, overall, I thought Cyborg looked as good as she ever has. And it, was, it seemed to me really, like a, a, wanna, vintage, a vintage performance. Okay, I want to stop you right there. All right. And I want you to break that down because at 34, she's certainly... Uh, in the twilight, on the other side of that hill. I mean, she's not washed, she's not diminished, but she's not the same as prime yeah. cyborg in my eyes. Okay. But the thing I want to give Chris, do we call her Justino anymore? We throw that name I, off I the window. I think that's gone. Chris Cyborg, the main, the main <laughs> point of compliment I want to give her is the stamina. Mm. The championship level aggression stamina never wavered in this fight. Is that when you're leaning on when you sort of say this is as good as she ever looked? Because I'm still seeing a fighter who still had so much. I don't know if she has everything, although here's the problem. Here's yeah. the problem, Chuck. Okay. Here's the problem. She was the GOAT. She lost to Amanda Nunes in uh -huh. such quick and devastating fashion, and because of Scarlet Tricks, she didn't get a chance to run it back and really <laughs> give us that, that ending yeah. belief. Yeah. But in terms of what you saw, yeah. you're, su you're still seeing Prime? I mean... There are wrinkles to the game, right? Like, so I think she could knock people out very easily early on. But it was just the level of competition. And I think these days, like, Julia Budd is no joke, right? Like, she's, uh, she's tough. She can take a punch. She was able to persevere, and I think she was able to kind of tie it up and make it look a little more competitive Her than maybe it was. Her size in the grappling is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And then when you, got, when you got in the third round and beyond, though, you could tell where the fight was going. Uh, I just thought she looked very good. I agree with you that, you know, her cardio and just had her age and everything else looked very good, but... Dude, when she th when she starts throwing those bombs, those combinations, putting things together, it is it's ridiculous. I'm still the same way I was when she was beating Jan Finney all those years ago, and uh, and Kim Winslow was just standing by letting her take that beating. It still looked like that to me, where you're like, this is like battery. You know, you're She's watching still, it in the soul. There's there's certain fighters historically in boxing or MMA when they smell the blood and they go for the finish. It's, just, it's just brutal. Violent. It's violent. It's accurate. She certainly had that. I did want to give that same respect yeah. to Bud, who maybe wasn't beating the same level of UFC level competition in recent years, but had been the champion for four or five defenses. Yeah. Had been unbeaten going back to what, like the prehistoric days where she lost to Rousey and Amanda yeah. Nunes, but. Uh, it was a game effort from her, but Cyborg's just too great. And this is sort of where this transition of this goes. Because, look, I love Cyborg the person. She's so humble. Yeah. Everything about her has always been great. A couple missteps here and there, maybe in her public presentation. There was the, <laughs> the, the one PED misstep. But she's always been great where to see the way her UFC relationship fell apart yeah. was sad to see. I mean, the floating of that video was, was ridiculous right. from her, her team. But at the same time, you want to see her have a chance always to, to prove how great she is. Were we too quick in taking those goat horns away from her and giving them to the lioness uh, for going into the, the, the kitchen and, and, and taking the heat and knocking her out? Because what Cyborg did Saturday night just adds historically to her yeah. legacy. And if she doesn't get a chance to run back that Amanda fight, which now you know doesn't seem likely. Right. It doesn't. Were we too quick to say, oh, you beat the greatest, now you are the greatest? I don't know, man, because I think the original knock, right? Well, first of all, she was in a weight class of her own. It was very difficult to find somebody who was 145 pounds, a legit 145 to go fight her. But you look at the amount of time she was beating kind of nobodies, and I, you know, I hate to word it that way, but she did go through a string of fights where it was just kind of padding. You know, there was a lot of that. And then, uh, you know, she goes to the UFC, and she looked good. Uh, she looked dominant at times, but she did have that loss, and there were a couple of, you know, I, I would say that she had more pedestrian-looking performances than she has in her career. So I think we're judging her exactly right. This was a big moment to see just how far, if she had diminished, if, if, there, was any, if there was going to be any of that, she didn't show it. And so uh, I think 
I still consider her right there. And so the Amanda Nunes one is weird, though, because of the way that they've, you know, they've crossed. I'd like to see it run back. We probably won't, but I would probably, I would, it's like a 1A, 1B to me. I mean, does she still have a claim to be the greatest of all time? I on, think so. On full accomplishments? I mean, you saw that picture where she's holding all four of her belts. That speaks for itself. I mean, it does. regardless of who she was facing for, to do it as long as she did and to rack up four different belts in all the major organizations. I, I think you're right on thing. doing it as long as she did. She's considered rightfully a pioneer because she started and was dominant early on at such a fertile time, yeah. and she's still winning. She's I mean, 34. She, I mean, I mean if she's able going. to compete at a fairly high level into you know pushing 40, how are you ever going to deal with that kind of uh, longevity in terms of, of just compilation in terms of what she did? I mean, it was great to see her get that win. I thought she looked a little bit human at times against Felicia yeah. Spencer in her final UFC yes. fight. I think she sort of turned that around, didn't really take punishment, was dominant. Does Bellator, though, have the, the bodies, the names at 145 to make a potential title reign interesting? That's where I'm a little... little I don't know either. I don't think so. I think we're back into that, like, who does Cyborg face realm. And even when they asked Scott Coker afterwards, he was basically like, oh, we're gonna, you know, uh, Julia Budd wants a rematch, but I think she's got to go on a bit of a tear. I'm like, a tear against who? Who, 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 is, who are these <laughs> women facing to, to get to each other? Yeah. Against who? So yes. I, I don't know. I think it's going to be more like it was back in Strike Force, where it's whatever name comes out of that hat is who she's going to go against. I'll give Bellator credit this weekend going head-to-head -head with the UFC rally card, which we're going to get to in a second. Uh, this was a deep card. There were a lot of storylines. One of those was the continuation of this featherweight world grand Prix tournament. Yeah. It's been fastic, fantastic so far. Been Darian good. Caldwell had maybe the toughest ass to date this weekend when he took on unbeaten 100%. Hungarian Adam Boric, who had been climbing the ladder, capturing everybody's imagination. And then, this. here's the deal. It was a somewhat pedestrian first-round submission win. Chuck, yeah. I don't know that Caldwell was overwhelmingly great, <laughs> and I don't know that Boric was overwhelmingly disappointing. I just know that Caldwell took him down, choked him, yeah. and that was it. You know, I talked to Adam Boric before the fight, and basically he was like, you know, we've been trained. We've already fought Aaron Pico. We beat him. We've, we've faced top guys like this in the wrestling realm. I think I leaned more the other way. I was like, oh, man, that was disappointing because I had him pegged, Adam Boric, as kind of the dark horse to maybe take this thing. Right. That's, I really thought that he would show up and that this would be his big showcase moment to kind of signal that. But instead, I agree with you. It was a very pedestrian showing. You hate to see him go out like that because the cat was just getting a name for himself. I thought that uh, he'd kind of, even though he'd had, you know, he beat uh, Kieran and he had beaten, you know, he had already taken out Pico. I didn't really feel like people were talking about him. I felt like this was his moment and he didn't get it done. Rashad Evans, who I do a weekly podcast with on CBS, had been in my ear seeing him at oh, yeah, 365 and, guys, right? and just being like, you know, rightfully so, you need to get up to speed on this guy. I had been, maybe this is his yeah. humble moment to come back, but Caldwell moving on. Who does he have up next? You know, uh, oh, he's going against AJ McKee. Whew. That's a big one. I mean, that you're right. His road is very difficult, but that's a great fight because they already it. have bad blood between them. I love Caldwell moving up and wait and showing us what he can do like yeah. that. Uh, to close on this, a lot of stories to talk about. But Aaron Pico, this you know Uber prospect who stumbled to that four and three record, came back this weekend not against a household name, but delivered the goods. <laughs> he, needed a, he needed a woodwork guy. He, he needed the yeah. uh, the. Um, the uh, shape up, get well, and he did finishing with a brutal left forearm that came out of nowhere. That was crazy. Uh, this is the confidence builder you need. What did you take from the comments before and after from him? Do you think mentally he's in the right place now? Moving? I think so, man, and it's, it was good for them to keep him out of this Grand Prix, but to put him back into the spotlight with these guys because I feel like he is kind of that guy floating around that who, who you know will see. He's 23 years old. He suffered a couple of knockouts. The big thing I'm seeing from him is he's picking his shots more. Like, he kind of set that up a lot more than he, he has in the past. I think his first six fights were all through in the first round, including him getting knocked out a couple of times. His last couple have gone into the second. So they're always finished. It's still feast or famine, but I feel like he's learning to pick his shots. He's reeling it in a little bit, and then he finds the moment to kind of explode. Uh, we don't have the name here of the guy he beat, but I'm sure the guy did well taking down the octagon after they're taking Saunders down the cage throat. after the fight and driving Pico home. But uh, strong victory there. Yeah, It's such a weird, fertile spot mentally where, where you want to keep building up his confidence. You want to see how far he can go. He was oh. so confident. Going in. I need him he, to wrestle. He, yeah, I know. Exactly. Well, I he's so confident. He starts with Bellator, so he's fighting guys who are capable of being. He loses, and I feel like he's been trying to chase his own confidence to get back to where he was. Luckily, MMA, we always say this, especially compared to boxing, yeah. you can take losses and learn from it. It's not True. the end of the road.